Okay, hi and welcome to another technology video. So in this one we are going to walk through how we've set up um, our DNS resolver on our PFSense box. Um, first of all, forgive the cap, but <laughs> lockdown unfortunately means there's no barbers open so uh, the hair's going a bit wild. So um, I'm going to do this one in my, uh, my dog walking cap today. So um, without further ado, let's get right into it. So what we've got here is our PFSense box. Uh, we're running 245, which is the latest release, and it's on a core i3 processor um, running at uh, 500 megahertz, but that can boost up to um, two gigahertz. And um, it's got eight gig of memory, so there's plenty of uh, resources available for all the services that we're running. So currently we're running PF, Blocker NG, Snort, and Basic Firewall, and that's it. Uh, we run a DHCP, DHCP server for IPv4 only, so we don't do anything with IPv6. And our DNS resolver is IPv4 only. So uh, we've already gone through a video talking how we do our IPv4 DHCP. So today we're going to run through how we've got our DNS resolver configured for IPv4. So let's get into it. So if we go into services and go have a look at DNS forwarder. So um, in this one, this is disabled. Uh, we don't use it currently because um, we're running the resolver. So let's have a look at the DNS resolver and we'll walk you through what the settings are that we've got on here. So as you can see here, enable the DNS resolver, listen on port 53, so TCP and UDP 53. Um, respond to incoming SSL TLS queries from clients. So we don't, so we're just using um, port 53, but if we were to respond to those, then that would be on port 853. Um, this section here is for your SSL and TLS um, queries. It, uh, as you can see here, it's using the self-signed certificate. Um, the next part that you wanna do is you want to tell your DNS resolver what it will expect the DNS queries to come in from. So what we've got here is we're telling it that actually we are gonna to respond to all requests from clients on any network. The next section down here, outgoing network interfaces, this is the interface that is connected to your ISP. Um, you might have one, you might have two, you might have um, three, four, five, who knows um, what your configuration is. But uh, in our instance, we've only got one, one WAN provider. So we've got a single WAN interface, and this is the interface that we're going to tell our outgoing queries or to our upstream servers to use. And then the type of DNS um, that we're going to be using is it's a transparent DNS server. So that is the default. If you want to choose anything else, make sure you fully understand um, um, what these options are. I'm not going to go through them today. Um, if you're using DNSSEC, then this is where you would enable it here. And we are not using Python, the Python module, we're just using the native bind um, and DNS. And then also um, the DNS query forwarding. If you want to forward all the DNS queries to your upstream uh, servers, then you would tick this box here, and that would um, that would use your upstream servers that you've got configured in your uh, network interfaces on the setup, initial setup. So I'll just go and show you that quickly. So under the general setup, um, these are the, the DNS servers that we've got currently set. Um, if you want to use your ISP ones, then you would tick this box here, and that would overwrite those when you uh, when you pick up your um, DHCP IP address. So let's go back here. Um, next one is whether you want to use uh, SSL and TLS to query your upstream servers. And um, we're not using it, so we leave that disabled. DHCP registration. So if you're using your PFSense box as your DHCP server, which we are, then we want to register those DHCP leases in the DNS resolver. So what that means there is if um, a client queries um, the DHCP server and gets its IP address, um, most of the time it will have its host name defined in that DHCP um, query. So the DHCP server, when it hands out the lease, it will add that IP address 
to the DNS resolver along with the host name. And then the next one here, static DHCP. So if you are using um, static DHCP leases, i.e. you always give the same IP address to the same client, then um, those mappings will also get added to the DNS resolver uh, with this option ticked. This option here, OpenVPN client. So if you have set up your OpenVPN server and um, um, you've got clients connecting in through the tunnel, then um, you can register those host names in the DNS resolver. Um, so just one thing to be aware of, um, it only works for servers, so um, not clients. So just be aware of that. And then the custom options here. So as you can see here, uh, we're telling our server to include um, a configuration file from our uh, PF blocker ng configuration. So this is a list of all of the domains. Um, it's basically telling it to use a configuration file from our PFNG blocker. And then moving on to our host override. So these are fixed IP address devices that we've got in our network. Um, so what, we, what we're doing here is we're saying that um, we want to add the host name and the domain that it's running on and the IP address um, and the description of that device to our DNS server. That's all there is to it on the general tab. Now the advanced tab, um, I'm not gonna lie, we've done absolutely nothing with this. So we just have accepted all of the defaults um, there's no need for us to change anything, but obviously you can do it. If you've got a busy network, you can up the number of buffers, uh, outgoing buffers, incoming buffers, and so on and so forth. And you can also adjust your, uh, your TTL um, for your entries. This is quite an interesting one, the TTL for host cache entries. If you want to increase the amount of time that something sits or decrease the amount of time that something sits in your um, cache, then you can do that via this option here. And then we're saying here, number of hosts to, hash, to cache, uh, we've got our set to 10,000, but obviously based on um, how much memory you've got in your machine would, would determine how much you can, you can um, keep in that cache. Moving on, so unwanted reply threshold, we don't do anything with that. And the log level, uh, we're just logging basic information, but if you wanted to up the logging, then this is the place that you can do this and that will then go into the, into the relevant log. If you're using um, access control, um, so basically if you wanted to, I don't know, um, block everything but only allow specific um, subnets then you've got the ability to do that here by ticking this box that would then add some ACLs um, that would stop anything and you would then need to go through and set your firewall rules up to enable you to query the DNS server. Um, that's about it really, that's all there is to it on that one and, and then the access lists which was based on this option here, disable the automatic added access control entries. Um, so if you wanted to specify some access control lists, then you can do that here. But apart from that, that is it. So let's move on to um, having a look at the status of the resolver. So under your status and then DNS resolver, you will find all of the, um, the cache entries and the relevant uh, TTLs listed against each, each of those cache entries, um, which can be quite useful for if you've got problems, for instance, it enables you to diagnose stuff. But this basically is the cache. So, I don't need to go through all of that. It's, uh, it's standard stuff, basically. Okay, and then the other option to check your logs is under status, system logs, and then you can go into DNS resolver, um, and that will give you your information based on your log alerting that you set earlier will appear in here. So as you can see here, we're, we've only got very um, basic logging switched on, but if we wanted to find out a little bit more about it, then we can come back into our services, go into our DNS resolver, 
um, into our advanced settings and then for instance we could up our logging to let's have a look for level 5 okay so that's all there is to it really basically so you've we've been through the logs this the log resolver is in here um, we've been through the configuration and setup uh, that we use in our network if you've got any questions about um, any specifics then leave us a comment in the description below and if you found the video useful give it a thumbs up um, if you didn't find it useful give it a thumbs up anyway and don't forget to subscribe and we will see you in our next video Thanks for watching.